Father, the King of glory, the ancient of days, the giver of life. There is none that can be compared to you. You are the maker of all things. There is nothing that be without your knowledge. Father, the life that we are living belongs to you, the borrowed life. Father, we are saying thank you. It's only the living that can praise you. And you said in your word, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Father, that's why we are standing before you, Lord God, to glorify you again today. Daddy, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord God, everlasting Father, as we encourage your world with your words for the next few minutes, Holy Spirit, speak to us in the name of Jesus. Prepare our hearts in the name of Jesus. Give us definite lesson, O oh Lord, to, to take hope, O oh Lord, from this message in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jehovah Lord. Blessed be thy holy name. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. A living person shout hallelujah. Amen and amen. Now welcome to today's service. On behalf of the entire pastorate, we are welcoming you and we are trusting God that the Holy Spirit will perfect all that pertains to, to, to us today in the name of Jesus. Quickly, we'll be looking at a topic that looks very strange most time to the church because at times the life we live we tend to forget ourselves we don't know we, we, we forget a lot of things that the life that is given to us is a borrowed life one day the owner of the life does take it and without informing us he doesn't even owe us that responsibility praise the lord but i pray we will live an impactful life in the name of jesus Today we are looking at a topic that says, death is not the end. Death is not the end. Because for so many people, they believe that once they died, that's the end of life. Mm. It is beginning of another journey. Praise the Lord. And if there is any topic that we don't like to discuss, it's about death. Why? Because it terminates everything that has to do with this terrestrial world. But one day, for every one of us, we have an appointment, a, appointment with death. And I pray that we shall all fulfill our days in the name of Jesus. This message is not to scare us, but rather it is to prepare us in our everyday living so that we know the mission and the vision that God has to us here on earth. Because one day, we must return to our maker. If not so, we should have met our great great grandfather here on earth. Yoruba will say, for see our Yema law. It's like a market. Every one of us will go one day, but it's always painful when we lose the loved one. But I pray that Lord God everlasting Father in his mercy will perfect our lives in the name of Jesus. Our text is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 to 19. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 12 to 19. And I will quickly read it from here. Now, verse 12. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, I'll say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. In other words, there must be a resurrection of the dead. The physical dead must rise up again to meet with the Lord. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Here, yeah, and we have found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised, not up, if so, be that the dead rise not. Verse 16, for if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. Verse 17, if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are falling asleep in Christ are perished. Verse 19, which is the last verse. If in this life only we, we have hope in Christ, we are of all men 
Paul's ministry book. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his words in the name of Jesus. The message here is very clear. Apostle Paul was talking to the people of Corinthians, telling them that then there is a resurrection after death. That the message that we are preaching to you, that God in heaven raised our Lord Jesus Christ, is a pure and the foundation of our faith. If you don't believe it, then that means you make the gospel a lie. Praise the Lord. So uh, to tell us that yes, there will be physical death, but at the same time, there is a re the, 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 the physical resurrection. In which case, our Lord Jesus Christ has proven to you and I. He rose and he said on the third day, he, he arise, and to the glory of God, he met with his people. And numbers of people saw him going back to his father, where he made promises. Praise the Lord. We are in body of Christ. Don't let us deceive ourselves. It is important for you and I to begin to live this life as if tomorrow will not come. That's the truth. We must begin to live our life as if tomorrow will not come. I had an experience, a very close friend of mine. Just last, uh, this last Friday, we went to bury him. I'm a bit older than him. Tegun was a wonderful guy. And it's as if everything that he was doing, everything was just tap, 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 tap. But when the, it eventually came, that I heard about him, it was long that we heard about each other, I was told that he was a minister in Redeemed Christian Church of God. I just, I gave thanks to God that at least he knew God before he passed on. There is no advance notice. Death is a necessary end. It will come when it will come. And I pray that untimely death will not be our lot in the name of Jesus. As a way of introduction, there are two important days in the life of man. And Ecclesiastes 3 2 tells us about this that it's a time to be born and a time to die. Those are the two most important days. We are celebrated when we cry the first day that we experience the birth. Then on the day of death, nobody knows. That one always it, it catches us on our way. Praise the Lord. We pay more attention to the date of birth by celebrating it yearly. Everybody will post it on the platform. It's my birthday today, and everybody is celebrating with us. But the time of death, nobody knows. It usually comes suddenly unannounced. This message, I say again, is not meant to scare us, but for us to reflect on our life generally and to make amends where need be. We must live unto perfection, and the Holy Spirit will help us in the name of Jesus. Now, there are a few quotes by great minds about life and death that I want us to learn one or two things from today. Number one came from Mark Twain. Mark Twain. He says, the fear of death follows from the fear of life. A man who lives fully in prepared, is prepared to die at any time. Let, I'll take it again. The fear of death follows from the fear of life. A man who lives fully is prepared to die at any time. By Mark Twain. He's saying here, the kind of life that you are living presently, they bring you fear of death if you know that you are not living right. But the second part of it, that if you have lived fully, you have satisfied everything, every form of righteousness, then definitely you will be prepared to die at any time. It's not about how long, but it's about how well. Praise the Lord. And I pray that Lord God will help us in the name of Jesus. The second quote is from Ivan Talon. I've been telling, it says, death anxiety is greater in those who feel they live an unfulfilled life. Death anxiety, that is the fear of death, is more, is greater in those who feel they live an unfulfilled life. I 
are we fearing death? Death is never an end. You have an issue in your life. The next thing you are thinking of is to take your life. Mm. You are making a blunder. Because there is life after life. There is life after life. There is life after death. Praise the Lord. And last thing, by Mother Teresa, the quote says, Death is nothing else but going home to God. The bond of love will be unbroken for all eternity. The bond of love will be unbroken for all eternity. The woman she knew exactly what she was talking about. Because she has served God, she has served humanity. She knew that the next level for her is to be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Death in itself is a necessary end that will come when it will come. Psalm 90 verse 10, Psalm 90 verse 10 says, The days of, of, of our year are three scores and ten. In other words, just 70 that is apportioned to each and every one of us. And if by reason of strength they be four score, that is like 80, 80 years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. We fly away. I want us to think about the life we are living. You may be comfortable or you may be struggling. You may have challenges in life. But I tell you, live to please God. So that after this present world, you can say, yes, I'm ready for the another world ahead of me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Also in Job 14.1, Job 14.1, it says, Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. Job had understanding. He knew what it was. It was a period of a challenge in his life. A man that is born of a woman is of a few days and his life is full of trouble. Yes, we are facing all manners of challenges. We want to pay school fees, house rent, um, to feed, to do this, to do that, all sorts of. But it's one of those things that we have to cope with in life. Then, same Job 14, 10, it said, But man died and wasted away. Yeah, man giveth up the ghost. And where is he? He knows that definitely man must die one day. Man must fail, man must cease to exist one day. In verse 14, I say, If a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointment time will I wait till my change comes. Even in thinking of death, Job had hope. He had hope of living a fulfilling life. Because he was a man of integrity, he promised himself that he will not compromise his, of, his, of his integrity. You know, he got to a point in his life when, when the challenge was so much and his wife told him, curse God and die. But he said no. Praise the Lord. Whatever it is we are going through, it's just a chapter in our lives. We will surely overcome in the name of Jesus. We will overcome in the name of Jesus. Everything in this life will come to an end. There is nothing that has beginning that will not have an end. We came into the world naked, and in nakedness shall we return back to our maker. That's definite. How and when is what is not revealed to individuals. And it's not about how old you are. It's not about how young you are. It can come at any time. But it is important for you and I to be prepared so that when it comes, we can rejoice before our maker. However, the life of man does not end in death. It continues the eternity either with God in heaven or with devil in the hell, the place of torment. I pray that we will end in the place of joy and eternity with God in the name of Jesus. Because for those who fail to live their life right, we end in hell. If we end in hell, and I pray that will not be our lot in the name of Jesus. In Matthew 16, 27, Matthew 16, 27, say, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. What manner of works are we doing here on earth presently? Can our work stand the test of time? Can our work take us to heaven? It's a question for you and I to answer. And if our work cannot take us up there, 
we should begin to have a rethink. Just like I said earlier, is to encourage ourselves to quicken us again that don't let us forget that we are in a race. It's, life is a marathon race. And marathon race, you must stay focused to get to the end. And I pray that we'll get to the end in the name of Jesus. Those who believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ and live by expectation of experiencing the same someday have the hope of eternal life. If we believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, then there is hope for us that that day is coming that we will meet with him eternally. Praise the Lord. In 1 John 3, 2-3, 1 John 3, 2-3, and it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We shall see our Lord Jesus Christ as he is. Verse 3, and it says, And every man that had this hope in him purified himself as he is pure. That is, each time we have that hope that we will meet with the Lord one day. We are purifying ourselves and we are preparing ourselves for that glorious meeting. You and I will not be found wanting on that day in the name of, name of Jesus. It is equally important for us to note that Jesus Christ promised that he will come back to take us home after preparing a place for us. He went. His going was just for a moment. But he went to prepare a place for you and I to take us home. Here are his words in John 14, 2 to 3. John 14, 2 to 3. And he says, In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. I thought somebody would say amen to that. We will be with him in the name of Jesus. Our service for him on earth will not be in vain in the name of Jesus. Those who have this hope in them will conduct themselves in a way that is expected of saints. You and I, we are saints of the Lord. It is expected of us to conduct ourselves as the saints of the Lord. In Psalm 12, Psalm 15, verse 1 and 2, Psalm 15, verse 1 and 2, say, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and walketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. Walketh righteously and speak the truth in his right, in his, in, in his heart. That is, we must also be upright in all our dealings. Either somebody is watching you or not, so that we can get there, we can reign with him. This scripture reveals the condition to be met by those who will triumph over death. If we are able to fulfill this, then you will feel fulfilled. Even when it comes, you, see, you, see, you are saying, thank God, I'm going back home to my father. In Revelation 21, 1 to 7, he gave us a brief description of the eternal life of bliss or of joy awaiting those who, will, who give their life to Jesus Christ. If you are here today, you are yet to give your life to Jesus, this message is directly for you. Because you have to know him for you to dwell and reign with him till eternity. And these are the sample of what we are likely to see in heaven. Revelation 21 verses 1 to 7 gave us some simple an, an, an outlook how, how, how it is. And it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. This was revelation given to John, John the Beloved. And I, John, saw the Holy, saw the Holy Spirit. New Jerusalem coming down from God, our, out of heaven, prepares as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be, shall be with them, and be their God. I thought somebody would say amen to that. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, 
and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is that at that that, that is attached of the fountain of the water of life freely. Verse 7. The he that cometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God and he shall be my son. So it is important for you and I that for us to enjoy the new heaven that is coming down from, he from, from, from heaven, new Jerusalem that is coming down from heaven, that we must surrender our lives to him. We must embrace him as our God and Savior. We must love him with all that he has given to you and I. And by so doing, then we are preparing a place for ourselves back home in heaven. And God Almighty will take us there in the name of Jesus. But for those who remain resistant to the invitation of Jesus, what awaits them is second death. If you are saying no, you are blocking your heart to Jesus, what is awaiting you is the second death. And I pray none of us will experience it in the name of Jesus. This is described in Revelation 21 verse 8. Revelation 21 verse 8. And it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and warmongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That will not be your lot. It will not be my lot in the name of Jesus. I pray that an eternity in the lake of fire will never be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. In conclusion, in conclusion, let us make a deliberate effort to live an impactful life, to affect our community, our nation, our families, our church. And wherever we find ourselves positively, positively because of posterity, what will posterity say about you? What will it say about me after we left this present world? Praise the Lord. Life is not about how long, but about how well. In Genesis 5, 29, Genesis 5, 29, and he talks about Methuselah. He says, and all the days of Methuselah were 969 years. And he died. 969 years. And he died. Nothing more was recorded in the Bible about Methuselah than being the oldest man that ever lived. He lived for a very long time, but his life was not just impactful. The only record of him was he was the oldest man that ever lived. And meanwhile, our Lord Jesus Christ lived only for 33 years, but lived an impactful life that the whole world is ever talking about as the savior of mankind after thousands of years. His gospel is still spreading all over the world. I pray that the almighty God will make your life, my life, an impactful one and that bring joy to all that we come in contact with in the name of Jesus. Can we be on our feet as we begin to give thanks to God? Let us appreciate him. Let us glorify him. He's our God. He knows the end from beginning. He says, I am the Alpha. I am Omega. That is, he is the first. He is the last. He has been even before the, existence, before the existence of the world that we are living in. He is the all-knowing God. Wonderful and mighty God. The excellent one. Our redeemer, the keeper of our lives. The giver of lives. Let us appreciate him. Let us magnify him. Ask him that Lord God, please empower me. Help me to live for you. Help me to love you for the rest of my life. In the name of Jesus. Let my life, oh Lord God, be a pleasing life unto you. Life of righteousness. Life of joy. Life of peace. 
where I will impact all that I come in contact with positively to the glory of your holy name. I want you to talk to him. Is there anything that you are doing now that you know that will not allow you to make it or to, 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 to make it to heaven? Ask him that, Lord, please have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. That's why we sung that, the, 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 that song. We sing that song, The Amazing Grace. He has an amazing grace that is ready to extend to you and I. He's a merciful God. And I pray that he will forgive our unrighteousness. He will give us a new beginning. He will perfect our lives. He will make our joy to be full. Thank you, Jehovah Lord. Blessed be the holy name of Lord. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. In Job, Job 42 verse 17, the Bible says, So Job died being old and full of days. You are going to pray for yourself. The Lord, let me die old and let me be full of days in the name of Jesus. Let me fulfill my days in the mighty name of Jesus. That untimely death, O oh Lord, let it not be my portion in the name of Jesus. I want to talk to God. The Lord, let me fulfill my days. Let me fulfill my days in the name of Jesus. Help me to live an impactful life. A life, oh Lord God, that will make life better. A life that will touch life. A life that will give hope to everyone that I come in contact with in the name of Jesus. And on timely death from principalities, from evil powers, from forces of darkness, oh Lord, I reject in the name of Jesus. There's a... The Apostle Paul says, I bear the mark of Christ upon me. Let nothing, let no man, let nobody trouble me. Pray for that mark of Christ. That Lord, let your mark come upon my life. Let it come upon my life. Oh Lord, let it make a difference in my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah Lord. For in Jesus' glorious name, we are prayed. Our heavenly Father, Lord God, we want to thank you. The entrance of your words, O oh Lord, gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. Lord, the little that you have deposited, O oh Lord, into our lives today, Father, let it revive us in the name of Jesus. Let your words quicken us in the name of Jesus. We are ever we have gone astray, Father Lord, by your mighty hand of righteousness, bring us onto the path of righteousness in the name of Jesus. Perfect our lives, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And let our joy be full in you in Jesus' name. We thank you, Jehovah Lord. For in Jesus' powerful name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. A glorious hallelujah. Powerful hallelujah. Amen and amen. Please, shall we be seated for a few minutes? Quickly, we are going to take our offering. And at the same time, please, you have your your Sunday offering, blog offering, your tithes, and every other offering that you know that you want to give to the Most High God, 